Howdy again. It's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and boy am I excited today. I just received a package from Ottawa, Canada. One Mr. Bill Kirkland made a major donation to my channel. Let's take a look. Now I'm not going to unbox this because I know how painful it is for people to cut something. I don't know why they do that. So that 30 pound box came in about, uh, what, 10 days from Canada and uh, arrived in uh, perfect condition in spite of the fact that it went through two brutal postal systems. But Bill is a, a dealer in uh, antique electronics and things so he really knows how to pack. He told me that and he was right. So I've already taken it out of the little beautiful finger jointed box here. So everything's laying on the table already but everything you will see momentarily was inside of this little box. So let's take a look. This was just a brief introduction. There will be lots of videos coming up on this in the future. So this box was outfitted here by somebody. Uh, this is not factory, nor is this bar right here. They, they had their books so that everything would fit into the one case. I think that was the idea here. There was a little damage where the finger joints started separating. I don't know if that happened in shipping from things jarring around a little bit or just from being old, but I did re-glue them. And now the box is in good shape. Let me set that off to the side. I was delighted that the original book came with this. It was marked one dollar and the date down here is 1963. That doesn't mean that the unit was made that year but that's the printing date on, on this. A few other items back there as well. Now when I received this, this was was removed and in there loose because it wouldn't quite fit in the box with this on so that's why he took it off. So all of these parts here were included. Quite a few accessories. Not every accessory that they make. There's really only two things I still need. That's the little vise that goes on here and the little drill press table that goes on here. So everything else I believe is here. The motor works perfectly. Now Bill told me that he got this from another man that was a model maker or into railroading or something like that, but apparently it wasn't used much at all. Maybe not at all, because it's just pristine. A few little spots of rust that I will clean up, but if this is already 50 or 60 years old, it's pretty remarkable. Let me zoom in on this because, you know, I see the name Edistol and Unimat and uh, and other names as well but this one is Unimat it's a DB 200 Canadian Edistol and you know these are made in Austria so they're pretty precision this is quite a bit larger than the little Manson lathes that I showed recently I hope that you people have been watching those videos there seem to be quite a bit of interest Let's do a real brief inventory here. There's a little table here. This is really to set it up as a saw. Probably good for model making and there's a miter gauge and fence included as well as a saw blade. In addition to the motor there is a, a bracket here and this will go on the upright. You know this is a little milling machine as well as a lathe. That's a combination so the head can be taken off and the post here mounted and then the uh, this goes on the post and then the headstock here well you know the game that'll be shown a, a little bit later on I forgot to show you the fence or the little table saw I gotta be honest with you I'm studying the book here but I do not know a whole lot about these little lays to start with, although I owned one, if I can ever find that other video, I did own one of these. It was a little bit newer model. I had it for about a month, never used it, and sold it. So these belts were mounted on there, and it looks like there's some spare belts as well. They're almost like sewing machine belts, and one of them was in this little paper mark $6. There's a faceplate, aluminum, 
This is the little drill press handle that will go in here as rack and pinion. Not sure what that is. Here is a little arbor for grinding wheels or possibly for the saw blade, I'm not real sure. This is also a grinder, so there's three grinding wheels here. Do not appear to have been used, as well as the little guard. Safety first, you know. A three-jaw chuck was included. Look at how nicely that spins. I would like to have a four-jaw chuck. It does not have one. So over here we've got, I, I believe this is the mounting hardware. I want to get this mounted on a, either a piece of wood or a piece of steel. Here's the tool post along with the tool in it. A lathe dog. Now we know what that extra large lathe dog was in the Manson kit. It's a Unimat dog. Another arbor of t some type and there's four or more of these little toe clamps that will allow you to clamp the work to that table that I still need to acquire. And then I don't know if I sh did I show that? I don't know. That's for the <laughs> that's for the drill press. And then a little box here with the original cutting tool system. And here are some various tools, cutting tools, a grind wheel. These are even marked Edistol, I believe. The little Tommy bars are in here. A boring bar. Here's a boring bar. Sure is long. That would flex like a screen door spring, wouldn't it? Cut-off tool. And several of these tools that are their own system. I'll be talking a lot more about that in future videos. I'm just giving you a little brief uh, video here of what I just acquired and how excited I am and how thankful I am to Bill up in Ottawa. You know, I'm just uh, 15 miles from Ottawa. That's where Lost Creek Machinery is. But this Ottawa, I don't know how far it is, but it must be a thousand miles. Also a tiny little ball bearing live center. These are the dead centers. Look at how small they are. A little bit of rust on those. There's a chuck that will fit on the tail stock or the head stock. They both have the same thread. And I'm already playing around with uh, making T-slots for uh, the table, if I have to make one out of aluminum. So, I hope you detected the excitement and the gratitude in my voice. I want to keep this short because you're going to see a lot of this in the future and I know there's an awful lot of people around the world, not just the United States, that have these little lathes. And the swing on the lathe is, I believe it's a four inch. Yeah, we, we would call this a four inch lathe. Although these grinding wheels are, what, two and a half inches. They might be metric. All of the threads and everything here is metric. No problemo for me. People think I'm ignorant of that system. But I do like it. I uh, do use it sometimes, although my audience is primarily in the United States. So I talk mainly about the inch system. All right. Watch for many, many more videos coming up soon. Not only about this, but I have 20 in the can right now that have not been released. So this is a good time to get into your shop. It's about five below today here in Illinois, and it's just cozy warm down here in my shop. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now, and I'll see you, I hope, a lot in the future. Leave a comment and give me a thumbs up if I deserve it. You know what? Give that thumbs up for Bill Kirkland, not me. Thanks. So long. See you next time. This little lathe is made in Austria, and I think it is probably fairly expensive. And it's precision, and here's the little uh, four-jaw chuck. There's a three-jaw chuck on there right now and a faceplate. That's aluminum. This is steel. Notice that my tape ruler 
is actually quite a bit bigger than the uh, chuck, than the chuck, isn't it? Now the little motor on the back here actually looks about like a sewing machine motor. <laughs> 